The family of normal distributions is one of the most important distributions in the study of statistics. Why is it so widely used and why is it so important? First of all, when a data set follows a normal distribution, probability calculations are easy to calculate if you have a normal distribution. Many real world life data sets, data distributions, and many chance outcomes can be approximated by a normal distribution. So because it occurs naturally in the real world and normal probability calculations are so easy, it is widely used in an extremely important distribution in the study of statistics. So what are some of the properties of a normal distribution? First of all, the normal distribution is a density, density curve, which means the area under the curve equals 1. The distribution is symmetric and unimodal, and it is also bell-shaped. How many, how many normal distributions are there? There are an infinite number of normal distributions. So how do you know which one you need to work with if you are trying to calculate a probability calculation for a random variable that is distributed normally. A particular normal distribution is determined by mu, which is the mean of the distribution, and sigma, the standard deviation of the distribution. So if you know mu and you know sigma for a normal distribution, you have defined a particular normal distribution and you can do a probability calculation on that. Let's look at a particular normal distribution. We said that a normal distribution is determined by mu, the mean, and also sigma, the standard deviation. Mu is a measure of the center of the distribution. Looking at our distribution, where is the center? The center occurs at the mean. Because it is symmetric, it is also the median, and because it's unimodal, it is also the mode of the distribution. So for the normal distribution, the mean is the same as the median, is the same as the mode. Here, our mean is equal to 50. What is the standard deviation? The normal distribution has the nice property that the standard deviation occurs at the inflection point as you go down the curve. If you go down the curve and locate the inflection point, that point will be one standard deviation above the mean. You can also do it on the left side of the graph. Start at the top, travel down to the inflection point. That point will be one standard deviation below the mean. Sigma, the standard deviation, is a measure of spread. And we can see that in this case, the spread is 15. The standard deviation is 15. So in our problem, sigma is 15. And we now know that we have a normal distribution with mean 50 and standard deviation 15. That's how we designate a particular normal distribution. We say it's normal with mean mu and standard deviation sigma. What happens to the normal distribution if we change mu or if we change sigma. Currently, this normal distribution has mean 0 and standard deviation 1. If you go up to the inflection point, it will be at 1, one standard deviation above the mean. This particular normal distribution has a special name. The normal 0, 1 distribution is called the standard normal distribution. Now let's see what happens if we change the mu, the the mean of the distribution. The mean is a measure of the center, so changing mu will change the center of the distribution. As we increase mu, the only thing that changes, the shape remains the same, but the center increases. The center is now at 1.4, so changing mu just changes the center of the, lo of the distribution. It does not change the spread. Let's put it back to zero, a mean of zero. And let's see what happens when we change the standard deviation. Let's make the standard deviation greater. It's 1.2. What happened? The spread got a little bigger. 
1.4, the standard deviation is now 1.4, and the spread of the distribution is greater. The inflection point is getting further and further away from the center of the distribution. And there is more area in the tails of the curve. Let's do one more. Again, the inflection point is pushed away from the mean when the standard deviation increases. Let's take the standard deviation smaller than 1. Okay, there is the standard normal distribution. And look at what happens when we change the standard deviation to less than 1. The inflection point moves closer to the mean and the data is less spread out. One more time, the inflection point gets closer and closer to the mean and the distribution is less spread out.